Hey there, welcome to another video. In the previous video we learned the basic of shuffle function and how it works. In this video we will explore another function. And instead of uh, working on the discount function, we are going to check the card validation. Once we understand different function and how it works, we will come back to the discount, valid um, discount function and we will extend it more and see how we can add metafield and use all the configuration from metafields. For now, this is what we have done in the previous video, the volume discount and how it works. In this video, I am going to show you how we can use the card validation. Um, the card validation is not under the discount API. This is under card and checkout validation. If you come here, go to overview, you can uh, read everything in the main page. The most important part is that you have to check the limitation and consideration. And this is important because if you are creating the function, you have to make sure which limitation you will face, then you will create your function. Uh, the card validation is giving an error when a user is trying to check out based on a certain condition. For example, you can find certain customers and stop them from buying a product. You can throw an error, you can um, show an error message. You can also say if a user is buying, let's say three products, you will not going to allow them buy a three product at once because it is during sales and everyone can buy only one product. Those are all called card validation and in this video you will learn how you can use them. Let's start. Here's the thing, you can have only five validation function for each store. That's important, but that's I think enough. So let's start focusing on how it works. It does not, in the documentation, there is no example of using function, but if you go to the overview uh, here in the page, uh, let's click uh, at the function result and see what we should return. Again, I mentioned this in previous video, the most important part of a function is what you return. If you return the wrong data, then the function will fail and it will not run. If you go to the function run result, you can see you, you have to return an error. Unlike the Shopify discount, which you are returning a discount, you are returning errors here. This is interesting because you will uh, show an error in the card. In here, you will pass a message with a target. Target is where do you want to display this error? Is this checkout? Is this card? Is this for email address? Is this for um, the address, the postcode or something like that? Now, if you click on this supported target, it will take you to the overview section. In here, you can see. If you want to target the card, you will pass the dollar sign dot card. If you want to target the email, you will say dollar sign dot card dot customer identifier here, like buyer identifier dot email, so on and so forth. Very basic stuff. Let's create the function and see how it works. We will display an error. Okay, cool. I'll come here. This is our code. What I will do is I will just say Shopify app generate extension. Okay, the first thing is we have to create our function. For this one, we are going to search for validation. There is sitting validation and under discount and checkout, you have this card validation. So for us, we are going to create a checkout and card validation. What do you call it? It should be card and checkout validation. That's nice. I normally uh, append JS for the JavaScript because a lot of time I create the Rust version separately because Rust is very fast. That's why I just prefix it. For this example, we go with JavaScript. Cool. Here is the other important of part of the function. You create the function, you deploy it. In order to run it on a store, you have to register this. We will learn that in the next step. So let's see. Once the function is created, we are going to register this. Again, if you come to the documentation, each of these will give you uh, an example of how you will register this. In the CLI, card validation reference, you have the GraphQL reference, you have card validation. And how do you register this? They didn't mention it here probably. Let me see if I can show you in the documentation. In the overview, these are the things that you have to know. Okay, cool, there is no example. That's okay, we will learn it. Okay, cool. Let's see if the function is created. Yes, the function is uh, created. All I have to do is deploy it. We need the ID of this function to register it in our store. This is card validation and I'll show you how you can register it. Before I do anything, I am going to run npm run deploy. 
when you run the deploy it is going to deploy the function then you have the id for that function um, if you check like okay see it says you have a new extension here do you want to release it yes let's do it you have two functions now one is product discount one is the card validation you can check uh, the partner dashboard for this extension this is uh, the two extensions that you have for this one let's go and copy the id you can see there is no id mentioned here how do you find this it is not under the versions sometimes you confuse it you just go under extensions in here you will go to the card and check out uh, validation in here you will find the id this is the id that you have okay cool let's go back to our code let's run it npm run dev so we can access the graphql app once you access the graphql app you are going to register this the graphql port is sometimes busy because i am running another app i'm going to shut down the other app because i have a lot of saved query in this one in this port i hope i can do this once I quit the other uh, app that I am running, I can run the npm run dev again. It should take the port, the default port for the GraphQL. The reason for that is if you have two ports and you have all these uh, GraphQL query in one port, you cannot access this. For example, if I open this now, this is the GraphQL and this is also something that you have to run. You can see I have a lot of saved um, queries here. So these are the, this is how I normally list all the functions in the store let's run this you can see we have basic functions we have uh, like this is the card validation and this is the the id we can also uh, get it from here and how do you register this like let's see you have card validation you have the id for the discount we had this example before where you could um, register the discount let me see if i can find that probably not in one of these but it was easy to re to create a function using the the function create api and then you pass the id of uh, the the function which is this id for core validation there is another graphql that you have to find out i normally go to shopify.dev and search for the from the assistant you will search for um, card validation and from there it will show you let me find that and i will be back so here is the mutation for creating validation all you have to do is just pass some of the arguments it required and there are some uh, other things like block on failure which i discuss in the future video for now let's see how we can use this uh, graphql query i'll op i uh, just um, copy this we'll go to the graphql let's go here this one is for the automatic discount you can see it does not have a title sometimes if you give it a proper naming uh, for the query it can uh, give you a proper uh, title here so let's go back here for this one we just add a mutation and for now you can see validation fields it you might get some error but let's see we can add our variable here let me just move myself around okay cool this is what we need a title and description and some meta field for now we are not going to pass any meta field value so i'll just close that for now uh, just remove that for now we don't need it this is going to be the title i call it card validations and this is going to be the id which id do we want to use uh, this is the id and the partner account and if i copy this i can just paste it here this is my function id block on failure uh, this is if if user see this error it is not going to allow customer to check out and enable is also something that if this is enabled or not because user can disable this from the checker from from the seating i will show you where this in the admin seating that is but the validation always show in the stores seating without you creating all those settings cool for now everything looks good ah uh, we have an error okay let's see why we get this error here if i run my code unexpected braces hmm cool let me see what do we need for the well uh, for the for the mutation in here uh, we need to to pass the ID here from here we have the validation and we need to pass the ID cool 
it's randes access denied validation created because we don't have the validation scope one of the important lesson you have to learn you have to have the scope now uh, to update the scope this one is easy all you have to do is first terminate what you have here again these are the things that you have to learn i'll go back to my configuration not these ones uh, shopify app.tunnel here is where we add our scope in the previous video we learned uh, how to add the scope for for the right discount for this one we have to add the validation when i work with function functions i normally add all my validations since this is just for learning i have to go through step by step and you will also learn once you update this you have to deploy your app okay npm run deploy let's see uh, Another thing that you have to learn is sometimes when you deploy it, it overwrites your changes here. You can see we have a new release, we have a new scope, everything is new. Yes, let's deploy these changes and it should quickly deploy my app. Once you deploy it, I can access it. Now I can run it again. Cool. Sometimes if you do not deploy it, you run npm run dev, it is going to use the old configuration. Which your app has that's that's why you have to deploy it before you run it once you do this you have to open the app in the store so user can um, accept the new scope this is the link that you have to open and from here it should warn it should ask you for the new validation you say yes update this validation now let's come back here and run the script cool this is registered now let me show you where in the store that is registered if you go to the setting under checkout scrolling to the bottom you can see this basic function has a new role registered here now this one is going to be your function and this is running and user can disable it from here turn it off it will disable this a lot of times i have seen a lot of customers uh, have this validation and fail for a lot of customers so they have to come here and then um, turn it off off or on let's go back to our code and let's open the store and see how we can see these errors let's see what is the generated code behind this let's go to the src this is where you spend most of your time let's go to the run.js the example code that we have is here okay this is the basic example card is not possible okay it says if the quantity is more than two such a great example it is going to return an error this is just the error that it is returning the default boilerplate is looking good and this is the discount array you know if you are using a map and filter you can return an array which is basic javascript let's go to our store and try to add something if i add three you can see not possible to add more than this now here is the thing this one is tricky because the these things are cached okay and user already had four items in their cart. that's why it is not user cannot change it i can remove this for next time if someone has some product in the cart, it is not going to work for them only the future order for now let's add one item here let's add two ah it's not possible because the condition that we have you cannot add more than one um each for each of line item because this is the sale period you don't want to uh, allow customers to buy two this is how the validation works now it is just a basic example i didn't write any code but you get the idea all of this configuration will not be this simple but you know uh, how you can write all your condition and in the future video we will uh, you will learn how you can get this configuration from metafield and then uh, it should work based on condition because the client is not going to come here and update the code right it should be somewhere in the setting so you can uh, configure or the, the client can configure it that is how um, the validation works i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video